I have to tell you something. You have to raise your prices. You are not doing yourself any favors. And by the way, you're not doing your client any favors. Your price does not match the value that you give. People don't want to feel like you expect less of them. And I want you to charge more than you're comfortable with because you cannot price yourself based on your insecurity. You gotta think like a businesswoman. So what do you charge? Let's talk about this right now. The thing is, at the moment, I haven't been officially charging. No problem. Let's no, let's decide no. right now. If you were to so, charge your friend tomorrow, which we're not, but you could say, I need you to be my first paying client. You're buying dinner the next two nights and it better be worth $500. Like, I, I don't know. I'm just making it up. I, I don't, I, if I'm honest with you, I don't think, um, I think 250 would be my, my start and then I'd move up from there, a session. Um, because I'm, I'm worth it. Like, well, first of all, you're going to give me clarity in my life. I know. What and, I'm, you, and you're only charging me 250. Are you serious now? I know. Okay. All right. Is it one session? How many sessions would it take for me working with you to really feel like I got this purpose map or whatever, what, what you, whatever you call it. One session will make you know that I'm the right person for you. Perfect. Simple as that. It's a then maybe you do this. Maybe you do this until you get going. It's yeah. a $250 consultation. Yes. And either way, you're going to leave with X. Yeah. And if you decide that you want me to do this process with you, it's $2,500. And it takes X. And you will still, for the $250, you know, get X, Y, and Z. But that's what I charge. I have a wait list. I only work with a certain number of people. Um, that's it. That works. Okay. I'm going to tell that's you a story. True. So mm-hmm. as I, this is super important because you cannot price yourself based on your insecurity. You that's have to true. price yourself based on what the market perceives mm-hmm. is valuable. And I'm going to share with you an example. So. As my speaking career started to take off, um, and I started getting booked and booked and booked and booked and booked, and I had this agent, he's like, you got to raise your price, dude. And keep in mind, five years ago, I still had liens on my house. So I was coming from a real scarcity mindset, and I was getting $25,000 a speech, which I thought was insane. I had never made that kind of money. He, you know, of course, you've got agents, so 25% goes off the top. But I was still like almost embarrassed to say, well, that's my, that's, that's my, I didn't even have to say it. He said it. I was embarrassed that how, how is somebody paying me that? This would have probably been six years ago. And the, uh, there was a, there was a bank, publicly traded bank, Fortune 100 financial institution. Their CEO was having a retreat. Their chief HR officer was at like, a, I can't remember the, whether it was like Rodan and Fields or you know one of the multi-level marketing companies. And she's like, you got to get Mel Robbins in here to teach the five second rule. So I get brought into Philadelphia. This was the most nerve wracking speech I'd ever given in my entire life because I found out that Dan Pink, the New York Times bestselling author, and this like super famous uh, coach that's like a CEO coach who also has a big consulting company and multiple New York Times bestsellers, they were both speaking that day. So like a complete moron, I go the night before and then sit in the back of the room to watch these greats go. And the whole time I'm having a panic attack because I'm thinking, they're so good. They, I, I'm going to, I'm, 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 there's no, how, I, I don't know what I'm going to say. How am I going to top this? This is so good. Oh my God. They're going to wish they're going to want their money back. I deliver the speech. I fucking kill it. At the end of the speech, standing ovation, the whole thing. Cause the five second rule, when I give a speech on stage, it's like a multimedia emotional thing. It's really a speech about anxiety and mental health and suicide and the five second decisions that change your life. Yeah. And so everybody's a mess. And the chief HR officer comes up to me afterwards and she says, Mel, 
I have to tell you something. And I said, great. And she said, we almost didn't hire you. And I said, why? And she said, because you were so inexpensive. We were told you were so good that when we heard your price, we actually didn't believe that you could be as good as everybody says you are. And then she said that coach got paid three times what you got paid. That author got paid four times what you got paid. And you were 50 times better than either one of them. She said, you have to raise your prices because your price that you're charging does not match the value that you give. And if you underprice yourself because of your insecurity, you are communicating that you're not, that the value isn't worth it. And so you've got to think the kind of person that you want to, and for many of you, for example, B-School, that's a stretch. It's not an inexpensive program. But because it was a stretch, didn't that make you feel that there must be value in that program? Yeah. You see, nobody actually wants to feel like they're a bargain. People want to feel as if you see the potential and the growth. People want to feel like this is going to be worth it. And, you know, the truth is I get paid $100,000 to give a one-hour speech at this point. Because starting to raise the price, raise my game. There's a reason why I'm the number one female speaker in the world. There's a reason why people don't even blink. It's because when she said that to me, it was a fucking gift. Because I was letting my insecurity price me. I didn't even see my own potential and my value. And it's important for you guys to hear that number, not because I'm bragging. I mean, clearly, if I'm, you know, to, to your point, Scarlett, you know, I, there's lots of things that we could be doing this afternoon. And I just wanted to be with you guys because I'm so excited that you're investing in yourself. And I just, I'm in it to make an impact. When you cross the line from wanting to make an impact to truly going, I'm going to also make a fucking business out of this. You got to think like a businesswoman. And there is tremendous value to what you're doing. And by the way, just because you can't do it for yourself doesn't mean you're not providing value. It's very hard to do for yourself what you can do for other people. Yes. I don't coach myself. Other people coach me. I agree. I fully agree with that. I know that um, I can give everyone the best advice, the best training, the best resources. And then sometimes when it comes to myself, I'm like, okay. It's not until I hear it back. Somebody else is giving me that information. I'm like, yeah, I know that. Why, uh, like, why don't I do it for myself? That's the, the, the reason, I can't lie. I recently came across you, came across you, Mel, and I was fully focused on what it is I wanted to do. You came, you came up everywhere in my timeline, everywhere. And I know that nothing is on purpose. No, nothing is like, is not supposed to be. Like I know it's, everything's intentional, right? So God showed up. He said, this is what you need to do. This is who you need to follow. This is who you're supposed to be kind of learning from. So I decided, I started subscribing. I was listening to all of your podcasts. I'm like, okay, I've got to buy all their books. And Maria I found about it last year. Her school came up last year and I'd missed it. So I signed up to the waiting list and I saw it pop up and I thought, am I ready for that? And then you popped up with, a, with, with, with the interview you had with her. And I was like, okay, this is it. And then it came up again. And I'm like, Tanya, do not miss, do not miss this. 
because it's going to blow your mind and it's going to elevate you, which in turn means that you are going to be that gift to somebody else. So therefore, if I don't show up, that means somebody else doesn't show up and doesn't get to do what they're supposed to do. So, yeah. I'm so and grateful. What, honestly. I'm so grateful that you're that you're here. I'm so grateful that all of you are here. And let me say one more thing about the money. When we underprice ourselves, we are actually making it harder for other women. Yes, that, that part. That part. Yeah. You are not doing yourself any favors. You are not doing anybody else any favors. And by the way, you're not doing your client any favors by giving them a bargain. People don't want to feel like you expect less of them. People want to feel like you see something more for them. Mm. If somebody can't pay the 250, they shouldn't work with you. That's not the business you're in. That's true. They need to do the work to find the 250 so that they can then actually show up and work with you. I agree. I'm so guest. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank All right. Know. Hey, it's Mel. Thank you so much for being here. If you enjoyed that video, by God, please subscribe because I don't want you to miss a thing. Thank you so much for being here. We've got so much amazing stuff coming. Thank you so much for sending this stuff to your friends and your family. I love you. We create these videos for you. So make sure you subscribe. Mwah.